Okay, gentlemen, what I'm going to show you today is how to disassemble a Samsung Galaxy S3. Um, what we have here, obviously, is the phone with the battery out, battery cover is off, and I'm going to proceed with a Phillips head jeweler screwdriver, and we're going to uh, go ahead and remove these screws here, and I'll show you how easy it is. We're going to strip this one literally down to the digitizer. So that is if your digitizer is fractured, uh, this one came, it was fractured, there's absolutely no image, and there's a couple ways you can replace this. You can replace this, just the digitizer, by cutting all of this out and removing it out of the midframe, which is the bezel, okay, all the way around here, or you could purchase this with the midframe, and then just remove everything out and... and motherboard everything and swap it out into a brand new midframe so the phone would literally look brand new once the midframe hits it gets as you can see scarred up uh, there's a couple more ding spots on this one um, and it really isn't that much more money to get them off of eBay with the midframe um, again in cases like this in all honesty it's actually sometimes cheaper just to send it back to Samsung who charges hundred and seventy eight dollars flat um, where you'll see a lot of the parts going on eBay for 225 and up. So we'll just go ahead and begin. Some of these screws will come out with the screwdriver. Some of them will stay in. All depends on how magnetized your screwdriver is. There, that one came out. We're just going around. So every single screw you see on the back of the phone is going to be removed. I'll count them up in a minute. Two down by the charging port. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine to take off the back panel and then ten to remove the speaker. And yes, sadly, I have to keep a block over the IMEI because yes, there are people who will and can steal those and clone them. So very simply, that's it. You just kind of reach in here and you pinch it and up and away it goes. Okay, so we're going to lay that aside here. Take the screws out of it. We don't want to lose any of the screws. Okay, so now that I have this back panel off, we're going to remove the speaker. The screws are already loosened. I'm going to use my dental pick. There's a little ribbon cable right here, a little connector we're going to pop. And there you go. So right here we lift up. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay, so there you go. Now, sometimes these are hard to get off. And this one's going to come off easy, of course. But if it gets stuck on this side, what you do is lift up underneath the screw hole here. And then push up this way. See my hand? And then it'll pop just like that. Okay? So there we go. Of course, this is a magnet, so you could just use it to grab all your screws and let's let it focus. Okay, so now what we have is the Wi Fi cable we're going to pop. And so we get under here with our and just lift that off. That pops off the motherboard. Okay, and we got two more connectors one here, that's the front facing camera as well as the LED indicator. Uh, excuse me, front-facing camera. It's not the, the LED indicator, it's this one. And we're going to pop this one off. This is the mic and the LED indicator. Okay, so those two are out. And we still can't lift the motherboard out. It's held in by this screw right here. Single screw holds the motherboard in. And last but not least, we're going to pop off the digitizer ribbon cable. Okay, and we're going to take this one black screw out. Throw it on the back of the magnet right there. And you don't lose any of your screws. Okay. And, and that's it. Now the motherboard li literally just lifts out. Very simple. There you go. There's your motherboard. Okay. So we're going to set that aside. Okay. And uh, now we're going to proceed to remove the front facing camera. Front facing camera, be careful. People do tear them. And I'll tell you why. We take the single screw out. It's a pan head Phillips. Okay, um, this part lifts out very easily, the front-facing camera. 
okay? It's actually the front-facing camera and the proximity sensor. But the part that was held in by the screw, you need to actually get under it and lift it up. If you don't, do this, what I'm doing right now, and pop off that rubber piece that holds it into place, you will tear the front-facing camera away from the proximity sensor. And now that it's out, you can just kind of lift straight up. Okay, and so this one's going to give me a little bit of a problem. They normally come straight up. There we go. And gently get underneath it. Sometimes you got to use the pick and lift away. Now it is held in by glue, so I would recommend using a pick. Don't pull up on the cable, you'll tear it. Don't worry about this adhesive because the new one has it. Okay, and there you go. Okay, so that's out. Okay, now we still have to remove the antenna. And there's a little indentation here. I'm not sure you could see it. Yes, you can. Um, I get in again. I use my dental pick. I get underneath and I lift. And then you slowly peel the wire. And I like to bring that little piece of green tape with it because I want to replace that in the new digitizer. I like it to be nice and authentic. When I get done, you'll never know the phone was uh, serviced. And that's really what you want the customer to have back a phone that's been serviced the right way. Okay, before we remove this, we can slowly lift up. I just want to show you how easy it is to lift up on that. Sorry. Okay, it just literally lifts up. It's held in by a very, very weak double-sided tape. Okay, it then comes up here to the LED indicator and then up to the microphone, the headset microphone for your ear. And then it goes down and connects to the volume buttons. So this, this cable does threefold, uh, actually fourfold volume buttons, LED indicator, that's two, and three. All right, so it's threefold, strike that. I can count. Okay, so now we got to pop the, the volume buttons out and the power button out. Because remember, we're replacing this entire midframe. And what you do is you just get in here, you can use, it's, look, look how easy it just comes out, and there you go, pop away. The power button's a little bit harder. Uh, for whatever reason, it doesn't always come out as easy. You know, but you hear people losing them, and it's not surprising they come out way too easy. Okay, so they're out. All right, now, the volume buttons are attached via the ribbon cable through a small little PCB board, and, and they're glued to the side frame here. And what I do is you could take a jeweler's flathead, but again, I use my dental pick, and I just get in between like that. And I'm going to try and zoom in here so you can really, really see it. Okay, let's focus it. Try to focus it, but the lamp's moving. Okay, sorry. Do it again. Okay, so I get my pick in, and you can see how I separate it. And then I work my way down very carefully, not damaging it. And you can see there's a little outward piece of the frame that holds it down in. I want to go around that. And I just kind of... Again, lift it away. And you, you don't feel it pop or anything. You just want to lift it away from the wall. Very simply like that. Okay? And then I come back over here to the earpiece. Let me zoom out. Okay, and I'm going to lift in here. There's a little indentation. And again, there, that's up. And then I slowly lift, and there you go. So now it's free but the volume buttons. The volume button, again, you don't want to tear it. You've got to lift up ever so gently. Get your finger on it so you're holding the board, not the ribbon cable, and just lift away. And there you go. Okay, out. Okay, last step is to remove the vibrating motor. Again, there's a small little indentation right here, just like there was up here for the antenna. See it? And you stick your pick, got to get a pick, they're great. And you lift up and you get the board out of the way. Over here, again, you come in from this little hole here. And you get under and kind of lift, lift, lift. All held in by double-sided adhesive. And there you go, and there's your vibrator motor. Okay, so now we have a phone. Just, just an old broken digitizer with the mid-frame. All the components have been removed. Let me zoom out. 
all the components have been removed and now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to heat up this back plate and very carefully with a razor blade I'm going to remove this. If you don't heat it up you'll damage the IMEI sticker and the Samsung sticker and then what I do is I take an old piece of shipping label paper and I'll attach it to there. Alright. Okay, so um, I'm going to heat this up and then I'll use a razor blade and slowly peel it away and then put it on one of these uh, pieces of uh, paper that had a um, an adhesive sticker on it, okay? This way I can always, uh, I can easily remove it from that paper and put it onto the new med frame when it arrives, okay? So um, I don't think I need to, show, well, let's just show you how I do it. I'm going to heat it up just like we do the glass and try and keep my finger over the serial number here. Yeah, and you don't want to you don't want to burn it, that's for sure. And we're certainly not heating this like we heat the glass. Now this part is metal. So once you get the metal hot, the adhesive on the sticker should come right away without doing any damage. That's getting good and hot. And that's enough. Okay. Don't you phone IME stealing thieves take my IME. Okay, so all I did was just lift it up a little bit. Just enough to get my hand on it. We'll get under a little bit more. And now that it's been heated, you notice it leaves no adhesive behind. That's as simple as that. I'll then take it. Put it on there yonder. And that'll get saved to be re-adhered to the new mid-frame digitizer when it comes. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Here's our old mid-frame. Ready to be trashed. Are actually sent back and to be uh, replaced. Okay, thanks. Hope you enjoyed it.